Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. We're dedicated to delivering quality auto parts, expert customer service, fast and free shipping, all backed by our 100% satisfaction guarantee. So visit us at 1AAuto.com, your trusted source for quality auto parts. In this video, we're gonna show you how to replace the radiator in this 2006 Ford Explorer. This vehicle has the 4.6 liter uh, V8. If you like this video, I hope you do. Please click subscribe, check out all our other videos for Ford Explorers as well as other makes and models. And for all your parts needs and for a radiator for your Explorer, check out 1AAuto.com. The link is below in the description. Here are the items you'll need for this repair. the driver's side front of your radiator, there's a drain, you can see the little drain hole here. There's usually a white eight millimeter nut here that you can uh, loosen. It's also an eight millimeter socket or Allen inside. Drain that, loosen it up, and your fluid will start draining out. We've actually already drained the fluid, so we're just kind of going through the motion. You're not gonna see any fluid drain out, but have a drain pan underneath to collect all your coolant. And while the radiator is draining, remove the radiator cap, which will allow air in and the fluid to come out faster. And once your coolant's done draining, close the valve back up. Now, just in case, move your drain bucket, and we're going to disconnect the lower radiator hose. Squeeze this clamp, and it will actually kind of lock. Move it up the hose. Twist the hose to break it free, and then pull it off. Take my hose up out of here, and I just plug this up just to stop the coolant from dripping. And to get the transmission lines undone, you'll need a proper size quick disconnect. And take the plastic retainers off the transmission lines. And you'll get some transmission fluid coming out, so have a oil drain pan. Put the disconnects in. Have to force it into the fitting and push this in as far as you can. And sometimes you have to twist these a little bit just to find the teeth that are holding it. It comes out. Move it over to the other one. Eventually, once you work it around a few times, it'll come out. So you force in that quick disconnect in there, work it up and down, twist it, um, just keep working and, and obviously you pull in sometimes to try and get the disconnect in there and then pull out and eventually it'll come off. Remove your air intake tube. There are two fittings. You just press the green tab to the side, pull them off. Again, the green tab, pull it up and off. And then loosen your two band clamps and pull the tube out with a flat blade screwdriver. Remove the hose from the radiator fill, and then remove the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the bottle on. And there's also a wiring harness clip back here that you'll have to pull off. Power steering reservoir, remove the eight millimeter bolt that holds it in place. And then just pull it up and kind of set it off to the side. 10 millimeter bolt holds the upper radiator shroud on here, and there's one right on the other side as well. More we'll move those. Use a good pair of pliers, squeeze this clamp, and this little tab will actually lock it open. Let's 
All right. And then twist the radiator hose and pull it off. Set it back as well. And then you can kind of pull up pull and back towards the engine and pull your upper shroud up and off. Two 10 millimeter bolts, one here on the driver's side, same place on the passenger side. And we'll remove those. And we're gonna remove the two 13 millimeter bolts that hold the radiator mount brackets. One on this side and in the same area on the other side. They're 13 millimeter. And unclip the condenser hose there. And on the passenger side, pull this clip out like that. And then take the AC line and kind of move it out of the way. And then you can pull your radiator and um, condenser. And there's bolts. The, the easier one to see is this one here. It's right down in there. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. And you gotta remove that one. And then the one on the other side, which you'll need a longer extension for because it's further down in. Nice long extension down in. Get on that 10 millimeter bolt and remove it. And you'll want a stick magnet to retrieve it. And the same thing on the other side. And we're gonna push the AC condenser forward. And try and lift it up and out of the radiator mounting brackets. Pull your condenser forward and free of the radiator mounting brackets. Now you'll want to unbolt the bottom of your fan shroud, 10 millimeter bolt here. And there's the same one on the other side. Take your um, shroud and just make sure that the uh, lower radiator hose outlet is gonna clear it. And on the other side, pull it down, pull that out. Pull the hose from the lower fan shroud. out. We'll remove the safety clip from this mass airflow sensor connection. Remove that and then we're actually going to remove our air box. Your air box is, is supposed to be attached to this baffle up here and you need to grab onto the ears, pull them and disconnect it from the air box first. Ours has been disconnected um, but you can then just pull up firmly and then get it from your radiator and pull it out. And there's a fastener right here that holds a hose clamp on. Use the flat blade screwdriver to pry up the radiator support bracket. Pull the radiator up, kind of side to side. You have to clear a AC hose on this side from the bracket. And then once you have that,
And once you get your radiator to this point, just take your bracket or mount, pull it off the side, and pull the radiator from it. And actually this radiator, even though it's dirty, is still in okay shape, and we're just doing this to show you we're not gonna put a new radiator in when we don't need one. So to reinstall, take your brackets from the side, slide them on. Okay, just wanna make sure that this part here goes up above this part of the radiator here. Just putting zip ties through the body and just trying to get that condenser kind of somewhat up into place a little bit just so it's out of the way when I bring the radiator down in. Take a small bungee and just pull that back out of the way. Try and make a nice little pocket to go down into. Bring your radiator up. You've got these uh, brackets that have to go down in. So feed the assembly down in slowly. And get this one in underneath that hose first. And then you'll have to lift up on the condenser and get the other one down in. You'll have to go back. And with everything kind of preliminarily in place, we can cut the zip tie holding the condenser. Remove it. These cushions on the bottom of the condenser should go back into the hole in that radiator bracket. And walk them down in. I'll probably use a screwdriver to help me push it down. Okay, push the condenser up and make sure it goes in to its mounting holes. And in and down. I'm gonna bolt in the top of the condenser. Try and create some space between the radiator and the bracket. Pull the condenser in. Bolt down in without dropping it. Start it in. So this side, I'm gonna put the bolt on my magnet and try and execute the same thing down in, see if we can start it, take the magnet off, tighten up, and tighten up this side. Now reinstall your 10 millimeter bolts. Hold the brackets to the radiator. Tighten those up. On each side, the mount on the bracket needs to go in to this mounting surface here. So just lift up, pull it over, put it down in. And the same thing on the other side. Thread in our 13 millimeter bolts that hold the bracket to the body. And tighten those up. Put this uh, pin or clip back in that holds the hoses down here. And then we can take off this bungee. This up 
and over back into place. Push it in right there and lock this clip back into place as well. Put our lower fan shroud back up in place. Take your transmission lines and push them kind of out of the way. Actually, just pull right into place. Transmission lines, I should say. These transmission lines, make sure there's no dirt on them. Push them in. And this hose clamp is still locked. Once you get it there, just push it. closer to the edge. Put the clamps back on. And then just make sure that your drain is nice and tight before you refill. Make sure you reset the clip. Put the lower radiator hose into the fan shroud. Feed the shroud down in. You can see there's holes in the shroud that correspond to tabs on the lower shroud. So you lower it down back, down in, and get one side, and then make sure you feed the other side on too. And lift it up gently, get this clip on, and make sure it goes back down correctly. You can also pull out on the lower shroud a little bit to help line things up. And then reinstall our two 10 millimeter bolts. One on this side. And same location on the other side. We'll tighten those up. Reinstall the airbox. There's two pins on the side that go into holes here in the body, and then the two on the bottom go into cushions on the bottom of the fender. Lower it down into place, Put the air intake tube first, and then you have to get the side ones in started just a little bit first. push it over enough to get the bottom ones down and in. These ears should be pulled back and locked onto these hooks, but it's a pretty tough operation. So I just make sure that this is pretty well lined up with that rubber intake shroud. Bring your upper radiator hose back in. Place. Squeeze the clamp, bring it into place, and release. Power straight reservoir, bring it back into place. It has a little tab down here that inserts into the upper radiator shroud. And the 8 millimeter bolt that holds it. Reconnect your mass airflow sensor. Lock it in place, and then put your air hose back in place. Make sure it goes on there correctly. And tighten up this 
with a flat blade screwdriver. And then reconnect the sensors. Make sure you hear a click. And then put your radiator overflow bottle in place. This tab goes into a slot down in here. And then this harness may be connected on here. As you can see, the clip has come undone on ours. But slide the bottle into place. And then put your two 10 millimeter bolts on. And tighten those up. reconnect this hose. We'll refill the radiator first and then fill the coolant bottle to the full cold, run the engine, let the air bleed out of the system, let the vehicle cool down, refill it, and then just make sure you check your radiator fluid the first few times that you drive the vehicle. And put the cap back in once you fill it. And this vehicle you can't check or fill the transmission fluid from up top. You don't really lose much during this repair, um, but if you were concerned about it, you could uh, find the fill underneath and add some transmission fluid. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.